I say in this video, let's have some fun and let's revisit the world of TB League Fison in this double hitter, black version, white version, the Archer Elf. This is going to be very, very cool. Why, hello, folks. Denobi2 here, and thank you for joining me once again on another visual tour. And on this episode, we are going to be unboxing and reviewing the TB League black version archer elf which this is the one that we're going to go a, a little bit more in depth and at the end of the video uh we'll do a quick unboxing of the white version of the archer elf and decide uh, who is the better version so let's start off with the uh with the black elf here and uh, the black version elf and uh, the box, you know, uh, again, I always bring this up every time with TB League and Fison. I love the whole unboxing, unboxing experience uh, for the price point, less than $200 with uh, shipping and tax. You get a highly detailed, uh, creative licensed figure. So it's not based on any IP or anything. This is TB League expanding on their already popular fantasy line of elves, uh, Egyptian gods and monsters, all that good fun stuff. This is the elf, the warrior elf archer. And uh, that little instruction there shows you to be careful when you're handling these rubber silicone bodies from them. I'm used to it. I'm somewhat of a experienced uh, collector professional when it comes to uh, these, these uh, imaginary fantasy character lines. Looking at the armor here, and uh, I, the first thing that caught me off guard is, is that the, in most cases, uh, the body will be somewhat uh, dressed up and assembled. Uh, but when it comes to the armor parts, I, they kind of leave that up to you. And you can, you know, you are able to explore options, and, and you know, you can put like the shin guards and the, uh, the shoulder pads, all that stuff. The the detail on this is is right on par. I get annoyed with that little button attachment. It's a pain in the butt. It's hard to attach that shoulder armor there where you're trying to line up the little divot uh, to, to attach it. So it can be a little bit challenging. It can be, but uh, I'll, I'll start going through some of the accessories here. And let's, let's just jump into the head. This is the black version head and the white version is completely different. I totally forgot about this. This was, was pre-ordered early in the year. And I typically, when it comes to these versions of black version or the white version or whatnot, I usually just get one. Uh, with the Archer series here, I decided I wanted both. The head is, it's its good. It's good. I'm, I, I'm a little bit annoyed with the hair. Um, typically, when it comes to the uh, the heads and the hair, it's usually, it's, be, it's better managed. So I, I'm, it, it feels like the figure was just kind of... Uh, jammed into the box really quickly but uh, yeah you see how it's kind of hairs loose and fray and so forth uh the ear is molded on which is a, a a new feature for me because typically when it comes to the uh the female elf heads uh the the ears are usually an option but since this is since this is more of a themed uh set it would i guess it would make sense that it would that the actual elvish ears would be uh, sculpted and molded onto the actual head so just curious, it doesn't really make or break the actual head sculpt or not. Beautiful head sculpt, just I wish that the hair was groomed a little bit better. Uh, the elf crown, right there. And those uh, those two, uh, those were arm bracelets, by the way. Those You'll, you'll have to slip those in uh, first before you get to the uh, to the gauntlet guards on her, uh, on her arms. Bronze. And uh, the this is different. So, again, it feels like the figure was packed a little bit rushed, and there's creases and folded uh, um, patterns on the actual outfit that um, I'm not saying it would be damaged, but it was clearly affected by the way it was um, packaged in the box. Uh, she does have uh, stockings on there, and, and I was concerned about that the stocking didn't reach all the way, but you know what? It, I figured out that it doesn't really matter when she put the armor on. The armor actually hugs the actual boot, so it wouldn't, it doesn't really matter if the actual uh, uh, stocking goes all the way down to the boot. That was a little bit concerned there for a second, I remember that. 
on the, uh, the little buttons and divots on the top shoulder pad. And right here, just a little bit of a concern. Uh, they put a lot of work into this, this costume here. And uh, you can see how it, it, when it's not positioned or adjusted right, it tends to show these crevices and, and crests and uh, um, like folded uh, uh, cloth patterns. I mean, and it's something that you can fix if you have an iron, but you're not gonna stick uh, an iron uh, to, to to this figure. And this costume, by the way, is it's it's welded on. It's you can't. There's no option of zipper or buttons to remove it. Uh, if you case you're wondering, she is wearing undergarments right on there. And uh, I, I'm a little bit concerned about the undergarment. Though actually, the whole outfit is it is black, and uh, black fabric tends to stain the Fison bodies. Uh, but this doesn't look like your typical heavy soaked black uh, b black ink dye. It's more of a, like a spandex type material. So I, I wouldn't be, I'm not too concerned about it. It, it actually stain in the actual body. Uh, when it comes uh, to these uh, character box sets, there is always another level. And uh, I, I, I just forgot about this. I just this was just early in the year that I pre-ordered it. I forgot that it includes some really cool accessories. That is a a, uh, a quiver to hold the arrows, a really really kick-ass bow here. Let's see, I'll get the detail on there so the camera can zoom in. Very nice, very cool, highly detailed uh, a fish line string on there with some tension on it. And uh, what else do we have? And we have her uh, her hood. Her elvish hood. Uh, that is the uh, the leather uh, strap that you would attach the quiver that holds the arrows. And these arrows here are are metal. They are they are die cast uh, for authenticity. I mean, if, if she wanted to shoot this thing at somebody, this thing would, would pierce the skin. So very cool. Yeah, I'm actually really impressed with the arrow. I want to say with the Hawkeye, the last Hawkeye figure I bought, um, the arrows were, were made out of plastic. Uh, that was Age of Ultron. I think that's the last Hawkeye that I bought from Hot Toys. Her, uh, her red riding hood uh, with the little uh, cuts in the, uh, the fabric there to uh, slip her, her elfish ears through. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, those are the arm gauntlets on there. You'll have to remove her hands to attach those. Very cool design. Gold highlights on there. And uh, this is her magical amulet to ward off or cast spells, I would, I would assume, right? <laughs> uh, and let's see what else here. I think that's it. And then her hands. Her hands are kind of cool, though. This is cool. Um, I've purchased tons of TV League Feist and Female Bodies in. Uh, it's neat that uh, these hands are unique to this specific figure that they're designed to hold a bow, uh, pull on the, uh, the string, and, and kind of uh, position an arrow on it. So that's, that's different. And uh, if you look at her nails, they're actually painted too. So extra detail to the hands, and these hands are unique, so it's not something you can probably use with another Fison body, but I, I mean, there's really nothing that would stop you. I want to get the arrows in the uh, the quiver here. I I was in doubt if they could all fit, but uh, in the end they all do. Really nice. Has that uh, paint finish to uh, recreate that leather look. It's not leather it's, or it's not pleather. It's more of a molded plastic, but it uh, it does sell the illusion though that uh, it's a it's a Lord of the Rings quiver. Gives you that. Uh, mystical feel to it. Now I'm looking at the box art here because they never provide instructions to dress these figures. So I, it's always I have to look at the art uh, and or in some cases I gotta log into the website and look at the actual uh, prototype photos because they, they just don't. They don't really tell you which parts go first or, or how to dress her up properly. Uh, in some of those promotional shots those photos are, are just taken at weird angles or, in the, or it's taken in the dark and you really have no clue. You're almost kind of winging it. This is a pain in the butt right here. I'm gonna. I had trouble uh, slipping the uh, her 
leg armor on there and making sure because I didn't I wasn't sure on, on how sturdy the actual stock and fabric is because it is more of a thin nylon material and you're always kind of trying to be cautious because I'm not going to send this back attaching that boot though was a pain in the butt that took a few minutes I ended up just doing a quick cut here I just want I really wanted to show the audience I really want to show you folks the you know just the assembly and uh, the, the work that it takes to uh, to dress her up and finish her up those are the arm gauntlets and they are uh, numbered not numbered they are um, with the letters left and right so they do at least help you which which of those gauntlets goes on which arm and that is her top arm bracelet on there I had to look at the photo to make sure that it was in the right position I'm gonna attach her arm and so forth and I again something like this just to avoid like the wear and tear certain parts have to go on first and, and that's just by trial and error you know certain parts like her her medallion that needs to be attached on first or not or placed on first and then her head because you can't fit that medallion over her head things like that it just kind of just wish or maybe a PDF I, don't, I mean I, I guess they don't want to print the paper or the material but you can at least provide an online resource to kind of show you uh, that way you're you're because you're, you're trying to be careful you're really trying to assemble the uh, the figure without damaging any parts or, or like the pivots and the joints and see right here where I attached her head then I ended up uh, pulling hard on it to remove it because I couldn't fit the medallion and then the quiver and then the uh, the le the, uh, the strap to hold the uh, the quiver so there's two accessories on here Oh great, now i got to take the head off now because I have to attach the leather strap that holds the, uh, the quiver and then it has to go at a certain angle or else the fabric will warp and bend and, and just it becomes a little bit frustrating. What should have been uh, of like 40 minutes of filming for, I don't know, maybe, I don't know how long this video is for X amount of video time, this, this whole unboxing and, and the whole experience, it took about two hours and uh, uh, I ended up having to edit this the following night just because you really wanted to be careful. And then the hair, the hair, the way that it wasn't um, combed or it wasn't protected with a plastic sleeve. What you see there is a toothbrush and my uh, recipe of a fabric softener and water. So about 20% fabric softener and water, mixing it and just, just dabbing it. Just lightly dabbing it and then just combing it and just being very gentle. And that's right. Hello, folks. Don't be too here. Now we're gonna take the time and uh, just, just be careful. That's just being gentle, and you want to be able to walk. Just call me just right, and and just know exactly what you're doing. Yes, this is a, a unique figure. It's something that uh, just isn't isn't normal. But if uh, if you do collect TP Link lights and figures and special recipe that I've picked up throughout the years uh, will help you achieve that look. Yes. That look of, of uniqueness and perfection. Especially when you're dealing with a rooted 1-6 scale figure doll. Is it a doll or is it a figure? I'm not really sure. I like to pretend it's a figure, but it's really just a doll, isn't it? And it's our job as collectors to make it look very pretty, isn't it? Yes. Almost done. Almost done. And there you go, it's right there. Uh, and just being able to style it right is really the key. It's really it's really the secret and getting her elvish crown on there. And uh, it's, it's tricky though. You would think that the crown would stay on with some tension, but uh, I, on occasion throughout the video, it kept popping off. But then I, I discovered that once you put on her uh, Red Riding Hood and slip the ears on. It really does complete the look. It's pretty. I, I gotta say, it's uh, it is a unique figure. Other than the uh, right around her her mid riff right there around her, her waist, 
I don't like that um, that the costume contorts on there tends to uh, create some, some some curls and flaps. I can fix that. I would assume maybe with a, uh, a blow dryer, maybe applying some heat onto those front flaps, and then maybe just adjusting right underneath her chest to to get it just right. But um, otherwise, it's it's pre it's very nice. It's very pretty. And uh, remember when I told you about those die-cast arrows early on? Uh, yeah, I got uh, one of the arrows fell. I went to grab it, and it stabbed me. I mean, that thing was, that thing broke my skin. That, uh, yeah, what should have been like maybe 30, 40 minutes of filming. Uh, it, yeah, it took two hours. This is her elvish name that I decided to christen her with. Uh, her name is Felorna Farona. Felorna Farona, that is her elvish name. So in uh, in my collection, that is what she will go by. Felorna Farona. Uh, all right, I must confess, I did use an elvish name generator. Yeah, the 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 actual generator would ask you, uh, would you like a male or female? I was like, no, I'd like a, an elvish female, and um, it'll generate ten random names, and you can keep spinning. It'll keep randomly generating, and I found this one to be the most uh, magnetic to what I feel she should be called. Now let's move forward to the White Elf. The White Elf, the White Archer. And uh, it's just, I totally forgot what she looked like. But uh, my god. Look at that. Just even the photo outdoes the black version. I'm sorry, black version uh, Archer Elf, but this one's already starting to look so much better. And then some. <laughs> um, all right, so let's set her up. Let's create uh, the uh, experience here. Let's, uh, let's get the foam pad. And let's look at it. Even the armor looks so much better. Look at that. The paint application. Uh, the weathering on it, very cool. Uh, even the, even the shoulder pads like half class. Look at that, very nice. And her arm, her arm uh, uh, bracelets. It's green. That's that's the key here. That the uh, the white version. That's her crown on there. Even the crown looks pretty. Uh, it's it's more of a, of a, a green tone motif white and green and I gotta say um, uh, I'll spell it right now I'll spell it I, if you have to only pick one either the black version or the white version it's gonna be this one I mean look at this head yeah yeah they they just captured that that essence and beauty just so much more perfect with this sculpt uh, her hair still needs some work and we'll, we'll uh, I'll have to do uh, an ASMR combing uh, later on that off camera, of course. But just look at her, her ears are smaller too. Wow, they just they went all out on this one here, huh? Her her ears are a bit smaller. Uh, the sculpt and the paint application just I don't know, just looks so much better than the uh, the black version. And again, with this one here, they they just sped packed it. I love the foam inserts, but they just need to to kind of just be careful. Uh, when you're when they're putting it in and assembling, uh, the white outfit is just it it just pops. It really really does. Uh, that uh, skin tight spandex and the uh, the pattern. Uh, it just it's really nice. It gives you that um, what's the uh, what's that festival that folks like to attend? Uh, like a medieval festival uh, where people tend to dress up. This is this would be a really this would be a really phenomenal cosplay costume in real life. Um, otherwise, I'm just expecting it. The uh, the skirt is wired at the end, so you can adjust it and, and pose it and so forth. And uh, just making sure. And again, the same situation uh, where certain parts of her costume tend to uh, create a crease. Uh, she is wearing undergarments, and to match her uh, costume, it's white versus the black version. Her undergarments were black. Uh, but everything else seems to be on par. Uh, her accessories all have that uh, forest uh, uh, theme into it, that green, more like a Kermit color. 
forest green kermit color there. Uh, her quiver is uh, green, and uh, look at that the uh, the quiver belt. Then that is her amulet, her elvish amulet on there. Here, her gauntlets. Very nice. Yeah, just different. I gotta say, if I, if I if I only had to pick one, I would have been really mad if I chose the black version and not the uh, the white version, because the white version is just it's there. It just has that more of just that attractive magical look and feel. Even the arrows look uh, just look even better. I don't know. Maybe it's just a paint application. Just it pops so much better. And uh, for her elvish name, let's call her, let's call her a Sakala Aperdov. That is her elvish name. Sakala Perdov. Sakala Perdov. Or Sekela. Sekela sounds pretty cool too. Sekela Perdov. That is her elvish name. Yeah, she's just, yeah, I'm sorry. The white version is just so much better. I, I'm sorry, black version, but uh, your ears, or I mean your ears, I'm, it's, it's the ears, because her ears are just like, they're just like cute and petite, and yours are just like everywhere. So yeah, folks, if you, <laughs> if you only had to choose one, uh, I would probably say the white version. She's just rocking it. Nothing wrong with the black version, but if you only had to pick one though, that, uh, that Asian elvish uh, uh, look is just carrying. So before I send her off to uh, my uh, enchanted forest, she's going to have to uh, visit the underworld. And Gethsemane is going to uh, push her through the portal. Anubis is uh, he's there to uh, collect payment because uh, traveling through the worlds uh, does require a form of payment. And I'm sure that, uh, that Sakela uh, can work out some arrangements with Anubis. Yes. Uh, local guardsman, the king, and uh, good and evil. Purgatory, making sure everything is good. And I have to say, folks, I had fun. I had fun with this. I always enjoy these, uh, these enchanted characters from the TV League line. And I want to say the next one is uh, another Egyptian character. Uh, forgot his name. Eh, you'll watch the review. Like, subscribe, leave your comments below. And uh, choose the white one. Choose the white version. Yeah, just it just works better. 